For many of us, we are more than ready for silver to shine and catch up with and outperform gold. But it has not done it, at least to the extent that many of us think it should. The gold to silver ratio is still very high. In this video, we're going to discuss the reasons why it has not caught up with gold yet and what are going to be the catalysts to see it finally make and have its day and outperform gold. Let's explore! Except for a recent example, and we do see uh, anecdotal cases from time to time when silver indeed does outperform gold, it's only a brief amount of time, and then gold catches up and just uh, outpaces uh, silver. It seems like time and time again over the past couple of years. In fact, uh, during the crash of uh, March of 2020 for gold and silver prices, the gold and silver ratio was far beyond 126 to 1. That's 126 ounces of silver for every ounce of gold. Uh, but in this day and age, we are seeing the gold to silver ratio still very high at above 80 to 1 right now. So what gives? Why can't silver get a break? Well, there's a couple of reasons why uh, silver is in gold shadow, but it very well could come out and come out of its shadow and start to shine above this yellow metal here. But uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, and we have to first understand the dynamics of silver compared to gold, uh, its attributes, you know, not only its physical attributes, but how it's seen in the marketplace. You know, silver is often seen as secondary to gold anyway. That's kind of the second nature of silver. It is second place in terms of the Olympics, in terms of, uh, you know, um, you know, credit card, you know, the silver card and the gold card. The gold card is going to be better. Gold represents first place. Silver is always second place. But investors shouldn't overlook silver's value as a powerful financial tool. And it can be taken advantage of during these times. Similar to gold, silver offers a means of diversifying your portfolio and mitigating a, your risk during market volatility and inflation, according to energyandcapital.com. But understanding that it can be used to diversify, diversifying your portfolio and mitigating risk certainly is something that has to be considered with silver in a different way than gold. Because gold is treasured. It is held by central banks around the world. They don't hold silver. No, they don't. In fact, the Bank of International Settlements does not mark silver as any tiered asset, much less tier three, which is where gold was before. Now gold is trading as a tier one asset, putting it on par with and equal to cash in terms of its liquidity. And so gold is seen as an ultimate hedge against economic instability. Silver doesn't shine in that way yet, but there's reasons for that. Silver's historical advantage as a hedge against inflation makes it an appealing long-term strategy for preserving wealth, but it's much more than just a wealth hedge. In fact, that right now, that sentiment is questionable considering what's been going on because during times of uh, inflation, yes, you would think it would be. It is barely performing that role now, I believe mainly because of fears of a recession, which leads us to silver's industrial applications. It has very diverse uh, industrial applications, much so now, much more so now than ever before. It's a critical material for multiple sectors. About half of all silver demand comes from industrial applications. And more than that, if you include jewelry and other applications aside from um, silver as a as an investment tool or as a hedge, um, in other words, in the form of ETF rounds, coins, and bars. In fact, ETF holdings, essentially that silver is kind of back to some extent as, for industrial applications, hence the two different size contracts, which is a, a small contract, which is one 1,000 ounce bar and five 1,000 ounce bars for a large silver contract. But the demand, that we see from the world silver supply and demand, we saw starting in 2021, 
uh, there was more demand than there was supply for silver. And it had a negligible effect on silver's price, by the way. Meanwhile, about 10% of the world's gold gets used for industrial application. So you got over half for silver being used for industrial applications and less than 10% of gold for industrial applications. Uh, with exceptional thermal and electrical conductivity, reflectivity, and anti antimicrobial properties, silver plays an indispensable role in crucial industries like electronics, solar energy, photovoltaics, and automotive manufacturing, and medical devices, as well as battery technology. And as these technologies advance, the demand for silver in these industries is projected to further increase in the coming years. Again, only really about 25% of silver demand goes towards products like this, physical bullion. As technology advances, demand for these silver industries is projected to further increase in the coming years. Coupled with silver's historic track record as a hedge against inflation, the metal is quickly gaining favor from investors. And that is something that is remarkable to see. And we're seeing more demand for the physical silver out there. In terms of the premiums for silver compared to gold, well, it is catching up. In fact, even when you go to sell, um, oftentimes you're getting above spot for your even privately issued uh, products. But uh, certainly things like maples and eagles, especially, you're getting more back. But then again, the, the amount of dollar differential to buy them is much, much higher. So you're really kind of losing out if you were needed to sell the next day uh, as an example. But there is going to come a time when indeed we're going to see the tide start to turn and silver will again start to recapture its glory above uh, gold. In other words, it will outperform gold. And again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there are times when indeed we do see um, gold uh, trade and a less percentage increase uh, than silver. For an example, the most recent case would be would be where silver went up 2.5%, whereas gold went up a quarter of a percent. That is silver outperforming gold. That's blowing it out of the water in terms of it's a day-to-day -day increase. And those are the kind of things that, uh, even though right now it is uh, just a one-off example, because it takes one step forward and then two steps backward is what we have witnessed and seen from time to time. When will that change? When will silver finally start to consistently gain ground on gold and start to outperform it? Well, it's only going to be probably after a recessionary period or at the tail end of a recessionary period. Why? Because again, about 75% of silver is used for applications other than as bullion. In other words, coins, rounds, and bars. That let that sink in. When you realize that, that starts to make things a little bit more clear and abundant because other metals during a recession, especially industrial metals, tend to fall because their demand is, is squashed essentially because uh, there is not enough money to go around to buy these things. The whole economy, GDP is down. Demand for products using those metals falls. And so therefore, you know, the prices of those metals are going to go down. Silver is affected by that strongly. It has a dual role. It's a dual purpose metal. It is a precious metal. It is rarer than the other metals that are used in industry by far, except for platinum and palladium. But nonetheless, it does have this, uh, f this sense, this feeling that's still with it, that most of us understand that silver is indeed a hedge. It's a store of value. It is a monetary metal, as though it is a monetary metal that is essentially dormant right now. It is commodity money, so to speak. And so therefore, those attributes only pop out in terms of its price performance from time to time these days. And with this period of high inflation that we're in, if we head into a recession coupled with high inflation, then you have stagflation. We've not seen that in quite a while. How will silver perform during that uh, time? My guess is it probably will trade up, but not in the same pace that gold will. 
And I, I believe that's really what's gonna be happening. So it's only after we start to see things settle uh, from the inflationary period, and we start to see things pick up and demand pick up for silver as an industrial metal, when then and only then will we start to see it shine and outshine gold. And so it will be less noticeable, uh, gold's performance compared to silver, uh, and then we start to see that gold to silver ratio narrow. And it will narrow in such a way that we very well could see uh, silver uh, trade uh, at a ratio of about 65 to 1, which is what I consider to be the new normal of what it really should be trading at now. It's certainly not doing that now. And we've gotten in the high 60s, and then it just kind of um, you know, broke off a bit. It, it did not hold that uh, gold to silver ratio uh, for long. Uh, but I think that we start to see it start to outperform uh, gold. And in that time, we're going to see it move up and consistently outperform to where we see it move past that 65. And at the beginning part of a recovery from a recession and inflation uh, either staying where it is or probably lessening to a degree, even that's not going to stop silver's momentum. As an industrial metal, as we'll see, as what was projected earlier in the year, that we will start to see silver's um, supply not keep up with the demand. Uh, now, right now, there are things happening in China where demand has been um, estimated to be much less than expected. So when we start to see things in some of these high manufactured countries like Japan and India and other nations, and even here domestically in the United States and Canada, when we start to see that uh, shift and change focus, then that is when we're gonna see silver start to far outshine gold. And when it outshines gold, we're gonna see that ratio potentially uh, narrow to maybe even the mid 50s to one. That does not sound all that uh, out of sync, right? It seems like it should be a 55 to one. But keep in mind that likely we're not gonna see another 2011 anytime soon where the silver prices spiked up to almost $50 an ounce at the time. I don't think we're gonna see that anytime soon at all. And so therefore that gold to silver ratio was trading around 32 to one. And we're just not gonna see that anytime soon. So. We should be happy with 55, 60 to one, and that is gonna be an unusual circumstance because I think the normal gold to silver ratio now, when only 25% of silver's production is used for bullion products, uh, this seems uh, like a reasonable number to me. And so if we can get to the normal ratio and a little bit below that, then hey, I think we can claim victory and we can start to see silver to outshine gold and to outperform gold. And how long it will stay there is anybody's guess. Silver is a very volatile metal compared to gold. And uh, I think only platinum and palladium and rhodium to some extent are more volatile, but they're seeing much more as industrial metals. We can take clues from the PGMs, from platinum group metals as to how silver will perform, uh, but in a less, um, but in, in, in less of a dramatic uh, flair. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Hope you found this video insightful, educational, and informative. Let's take a look at that gold bar again. And I want to encourage you to please rate this video, share it, comment, and subscribe.